Hello everyone, welcome back to this back of AX8000 motion control series video. This is the second video we will discuss the TwinSafe STO Safe Torque Off Mode where the EL6900 or 6910, the safety controller, usually the safety controller from back off is this style. And we will configure the EL69 controller and I will program very simple logic so we can enable the safety torque STO so that we can enable the power to the AX8000. The safety torque, that's the essential safety enable or disable for the drive. So this is a very essential step before we start every fine tuning or any test on the drive side. But in this video, I will briefly discuss how can we program very simple program to enable the STO. For more detail on the TwinSafe program and the setting, you can go to my channel and I have another series video discuss the TwinSafe program. So you can go to my channel Electrical Automation Hands On and then go to the playlist and find out the industry safety control. And from the playlist at the right side, Start from the SA03, EP01. I have uh, around 10 videos discuss the bike of safety. You are welcome to review the safety control from this playlist, Industry Safety Control. I will also paste this Industry Safety Control playlist under this video. From the previous video, we used the scan function to upload the hardware under this I.O. area. And then we'll create the Drive Manager to this project and after those hardware configuration, we can click this download active hardware configuration. And after the download, the next step basically we will turn on the motor and do a very simple try. For example, forward or reward, jog mode or velocity mode, do a simple try. Or you can keep forward to optimize the motor based on your actual load. However, you will find you cannot power on the motor because by default, all the AX8000, those motors, basically they come with the safety function, the STO safety function. Without the safety enable, you can now power on the motor. You will see the drive shows now ready with arrow. That because we need to enable the drive. Basically enable the STO mode. You can use the physical IO to enable the STO, the enable the safety of the drive. But most of cases, we will use the safety controller EL6900 or EL6910 or highly recommend you use the EL6910. So this is the safety controller. So we will use the safety over EtherCAD. So we will use this EL6900 or 10, this controller and give the enable signal over the EtherCAD to the drive STO safety enable. So you could see this is a little bit challenge because it need the TwinCAD PLC knowledge, EtherCAD communication, drive knowledge, and the twin safe safety, the safety program and the safety communication. So a little bit of challenge for the new learner. That is my motivation to set up this video. Okay, so next step, we will create a safety controller, a project at here, and then we will set up the safety. Okay, click this safety, right click, create a safety project. I highly recommend you can select this, pre-config the inputs. Basically here, we will use all the default hardware safety PLC, graph editor. Okay, here author, you can select a name and internal project name, you can select the name associated with your project and then click OK. Then we will create one safety project. And because we select the pre-config, so the system will automatically create these two signals, error acknowledgement and one run. The run signal here is a run enable signal for the TwinSafe group in the safety PLC. The arrow acknowledge is also used to acknowledge the arrow from the TwinSafe group. Those two signals will be controlled from the PLC. We can give an enable signal to the run. Also, we can connect one button, click the acknowledge to acknowledge all the faults from the safety controller. And these two signals will be controlled from the standard PLC. This is the alias devices. And from here, we can right click, click this import alias device from IO configuration. This allows us to import all the safety module from our IO hardware configuration. Our IO hardware come from here. 
From the last video, we used the scan function, scan the safety modules. All those safety modules at the right side of this EK1100. This is the Etherkite interface module, EK1100. And at the right side of this module, I have EL6900. This is a safety controller. And I have a safety input, EL1904, and safety output, EL2904. Those images can read the signal from this I.O and control the signal to the actual I.O. Okay, so click this import alias devices. Here, as we can see, I have a safety input and safety output. Also, the drive, it also come with the safety. So this is my drive. And the safety controller we can config under the target system. I will show how can we config that after. Okay, in current situation, my actuator, this is the drive. So I will temporarily uncheck this safety output. I will use this safety input. For example, this is the one e-stop signal. So the e-stop signal come from this safety input 1904. And then use the safety function block, enable the STO. That STO will control this drive. That's why currently I only check this safety input and this drive, okay? As we can see, after the import, it create two images here. Why is the drive? Why is the safety input? Because all those I/O we scanned the actual hardware. That's why here it shows one deep switch inside. The deep switch it come from the right side of the module. This is safety input module. At the right side of this module, it has a small deep switch inside. Keep in mind, you need to set correctly on this deep switch. Basically, from your electrical design that join, you need to pre-design the deep switch. Make sure every safety hardware it has a unique deep switch number, okay? Also, you need to make sure this SFOE address match with your actual hardware deep switch selection. Then let's go to the drive. Drive, you can see here, by default, the SFOE, this configuration, is this complex number here. And the 64, this is my actual hardware deep switch selection. Please see the picture in the screen. So this deep switch, you have to take off this cover from the drive and the deep switch is under this cover. So make sure you take it off and select while the power is shut down, okay? Make sure the power shut down and you set this deep switch. And here, this FSOE address, make sure you click this small button to make sure it match this actual hardware deep switch selection. Click, you can see, okay, now we match this value. If it doesn't match, you will find the safety communication error while you are testing the safety. And from this process image, we can see, this is the safety image mapping from the drive. We can see the drive axis A, axis B, we have two motors. So each motor have this STO, STO enable signal. So in this video, I will leverage the input, the one e-stop signal and use a very simple function block. And we can give the enable signal to this access A STO and access B STO. Once those two signals got on, so we can enable the access, enable the server drive. And now let's go to this target system here. This is the place to match actual CPU, the safety CPU. So we select this EL6900. In this case, I'm using EL6900, but highly recommend you select the EL6910 because most of the cases, other than the STO safety mode, you probably could use the SLS safety limit speed or other safety control method. So. The 6910 allows the system we can use the wizard, the safety wizard. The system can automatically create some safety logic behind, which is very convenient. But 6900, it doesn't support that. For some simple safety logic, as this case, we directly give a STO enable. That's it. So you can select 6900. Okay, it's quite straightforward. Then you can select this 6900. And this 6900 that come from the Device three, here we can see this chart hierarchy. Device three, terminal one, device three, terminal one, and uh, EL6900, it come from here, terminal two, okay?
Keep in mind this. Okay, and then click OK. We select this hardware, tell this target system my controller is at here. We can see after we select this controller, we can see this area got a change. Okay. And keep in mind this hardware address that must match with our actual hardware. So the easy way we can click this refresh and click this upload. Make sure the value showing here does come from the actual hardware. So in this case, I'm actually using this controller that's number is one. And after it reads successfully, so make sure you click this save. Make sure you save that. Without this saving here, once you switch other screens and once you turn back, this area will lost. Make sure you save. And after save, personally, I also highly recommend you can click this build. Make sure all those configuration compiled and saved into this project. Okay. And in some cases, if you can now read successfully, here, then you better check this EMS NET ID. Where we can find this EMS NET ID? That actually represent where we can find this hardware controller. Then we go to the I/O and check out this device three. And we can see here this EtherCAD address one ninety two one sixty eight one dot ten dot four point one. So this address match the number showing at that target, safety target system. Then we, if we go back to this target system, so this number match there. That means when we click this upload, the system is using this router, this address, find out the actual hardware and read the actual code from the hardware. Okay, and after we config this target system, then we will figure out these two signals. These two signals come from the standard PLC. So we need to give a always on signal for the run and use one button to control this error acknowledge. Okay. Then we go to standard PLC side and we can create one global variable list. I name that safety. But here, keep in mind, the bool signal, we need to guarantee that is the output signal. That is the AT percent Q star here. That is the output signal. This output signal will connect to this area as the input of the city. All right, this is the acknowledge. And then let's create one run signal. And then let's create this city run, this variable. And same thing, this is the queue. And here, I will also create another variable that named the city restart. This restart is used to acknowledge or restart the function block in the city program. Usually, highly recommend this safety function block restart signal should come from a safety signal. But in this video, for the testing purpose, I will use one standard signal, give this restart this signal. And keep in mind, this error acknowledge is used to acknowledge the safety controller fault. And this safety restart is used to restart or acknowledge fault for the safety program. So this is two different error acknowledge and restart. Okay, this three signal as the standard PLC output will be used as the input from the safety controller. And then from the standard PLC, I will read one actual hardware input. So I will create another global variable list and, and declare one variable. That is the variable is the input. So that input signal will connect to one standard input module. So I can use one acknowledge button and acknowledge the fault for the safety controller. All right, and here I will create this global variable list. I will name that IO. All the variables under this IO variable list, I will name that bool input acknowledge signal. And since this is an input signal, so this format should named AT percent I star. Okay, let's save and let's build the project. Keep in mind, you must build the project. Okay, after the build, the system will generate all those signal image. And then from the standard input, we can link the IO, the variable. The variable we just declare, this is the acknowledge signal. I connect one acknowledge button 
at this standard input. So once I click this button, so this input will be on and off. Okay, that's the momentary button. Okay, we link this I/O to this hardware, this first input, and then we can program very simple logic. So this signal is a PLC output, but will be used as an input for the safety. And then for the test purpose, I will also use this acknowledge signal connect to this safety error acknowledge. This safety error acknowledge will be used to acknowledge the fault for the safety controller EL or CT900. All right, this is a safety run, and we give the true, give a always on signal. And then let's go to the safety, this alias devices, and link to the variable we declare the variable from the standard PLC, that's a safety run. So we linked this standard PLC IO, the output to here, this alias device. And this error acknowledgement, we connect to this safety error acknowledge. Okay, this is used to acknowledge the fault from the safety controller. Let's create another alias input, digital input come from the standard. We can name this alias variable SF input restart, then connect to this restart signal. Okay. This is a safety restart signal. Okay, it comes from here. Okay, the first line. And then let's go to config the safety input channel properties. Config the individual channel input here. And for this safety input, I'm connecting one e-stop signal. And this is a very simple e-stop signal. Basically, it's a one switch. So I'm connecting the first input from this safety input module. So I'm using this channel, the first channel. And next step, we will start to program very simple logic at this twin safe group one. We will program very simple function block, the safety function block. And we will use the e-stop safety input and give an enable signal to the STO, the drive. Okay. So now we'll add the configuration mode. And let's double click this uh, twin safe group one. And now let's double click. I open this safety program area. And the easy way to implement this safety, we will use this e-stop function block. The basic idea, once this e-stop input is on, and this output, e-stop output, will be on. And from this restart, we will name one variable, sf underscore restart. After the e-stop from on to off, and after from off to on we recover, we have to turn on this restart on and off. So basically that is uh, the momentary button from zero to one, and from one to off this change. So that allows this e-stop, this input on signal can be transferred to the e-stop output. This is the basic e-stop confirm and acknowledge that sequence. And at this uh, e-stop input one, I will name this channel one. And I will use two channel one, this signal put into the input one and input two because their relationship is AND, A-N-D, AND logic. This is a simple demonstration, okay? Ideally, in the actual case, you should have uh, two channels, channel one and channel two, go to the input one, input two. Okay, at this e-stop output, I will name this variable sf underscore output underscore drive sto. Okay, and this e-stop output, that doesn't have delay. And now let's link all those variables to the alias variable or the actual safety input. So basic idea, we will connect this restart signal, this variable, to this variable here. If you recall, this variable will be controlled by the standard PLC variable. That transfer here and this connect to here. This is their link. And this e-stop channel one signal, we will connect this variable to the channel one from the EL1904. And output, this variable will be connected to the drive input, the STO motor access A and access B, STO enable. Okay, this is the basic idea. 
To connect those variables, we have to use the variable mapping at here. Let's click this variable mapping, this area. And first, let's connect this restart signal. This is restart for the function block in the city program. Okay. As we can see here, firstly, we click this SF underscore restart. This is this variable at here. Click this small square button. And then we will find out from this list to find out this variable SF in restart is here. Okay. Connect to this in and click OK. All right, we finished this connection. And now let's connect this e-stop channel one, this signal to the physical channel, the first channel from this EL1904. Click this small square. And find out the actual channel from the EL1904, the first channel. Because physically I connect the e-stop button on the first channel. Okay, and now for the CD output here, this output, this variable name come from here. So I will connect the output to the CD that, that access A and access B. Okay, click the square and let's find out if you recall from the CD input mapping from the drive, the access A STO and access B STO, we will connect this output signal to the drive, this two enable signal. And once this drive A or drive B STU signal got on, safety released. Okay, let's connect. You can hold the control and the multi select. Okay, let's select the A and the B. So we can see this channel, we can multi select. Okay, so that means once this on here, here, so it can enable the motor A and the motor B. All right, we finished this connection. And then let's go to this group pause. Let's double check because when we set up this safety project, we set up the pre-config. That's why here this run signal, it already connected here, run stop. This run and stop, this is a group port. This twin safe group one run and stop. So it controlled by this variable and this variable controlled by the standard PLC always on true signal. And this arrow acknowledge, that's the acknowledge for the this twin set group one. This arrow acknowledge come from here, this arrow acknowledgement. So we can see this group port, the actual variable, they are connected here. This group port underscore arrow group port underscore run stop running as a bridge. So this is the actual signal come from this area. And this connect to the next page, give a run or acknowledge the fault from this group port. And quickly record this arrow acknowledge. We already got all the connection, the link. Okay, now we can build, we can verify the safety program and we are going to download the program to the CD controller. And let's double check this series number, okay? Firstly, I'm going to build the entire project. And then let's verify the CD project. Okay, verify, no any error. And now let's go to download, okay? Username, this is the administrator. And here we need to type in the serial number. And the serial number come from the target system at here, serial number. So let's download again. The username and the administrator and the serial number 256-7206 at here. And password, that's the twin safe. WIN, that's a small case. Okay, click here. And password, type in again, twin safe. All right, we download without any error. Let's go to the program. Okay, and now we can also log in the standard PLC program. And in the meantime, we can start up the controller. Now we are at the run mode.
okay uh, let's click this online show online so now we can see the actual signal okay here firstly you need to verify if this group port underscore run stop that is on or off this on allows this safety group continuous run okay this must be true to on and then you need to double check this e style physical io if this signal come back okay now i released the e stop so we can see this e stop signal that's it's on and however now we haven't acknowledged this function block yet so that's why the function block output here it shows yellow and this restart signal connect to the signal at here this acknowledge and this in restart linked to one standard plc signal that standard plc signal come from one physical button the momentary button so this sequence we need from zero on and then go zero so meantime we can watch this output this status and now let's click on we can see here and release after we release we can see this output here that's the screen that enable the drive in your actual case this area will be some logic at here for example you could have a e-stop or you could have a safety door so that logic will be connected to here that eventually enable the safety drive STO and now we can see after we enable the STO from this drive this project the status of the drive it shows OP the access is ready here so once the safety enabled so the access is ready to run and from the drive system from the motor go to the channel a motor at once and here if we type in the save we can see this output stage save status here it shows ready state one that means this safety is enabled and now if we go to the online from this access here if we turn on this enable we can see here the drive is ready that means the drive now is enabled so once we click this jog the drive can run which means the safety program enabled the drive with this safety enabled we can test the jog we can verify if the encoder scaling is working properly or we can tune the motor after but the safety is the first step all right this is a video i would like to show the safety program and enable the sto signal for the drive okay that's it for today thank you for watching thank you for watching if you like this video please give me a thumb up if you like to watch more videos in my channel please subscribe and hit the bell thank you for watching